Hey everyone, this is Brandon, and in this Inkscape lesson, we're going to learn how to create a simple Meteorite logo. Let's start by switching to the Squares and Rectangles tool here, and let's create a long, thin rectangle. Next, let's grab this circular handle at the top right corner, and drag it down as far as we can to round the ends. Now let's turn this into a path by going to Path, Object to Path. Then we can switch to the Node tool here, select these three top nodes, and click this button up here to join them together at the center. And we can hold Ctrl and drag this node up a bit to make the shape longer. Okay, now let's open the Fill and Stroke dialog with this button, and let's give this object a reddish orange fill. Next, we want to switch to the Select tool and duplicate this path with Ctrl D. And let's make it more orange and more desaturated. Then let's go to Path, Inset. If we zoom in some by holding Ctrl and scrolling up the mouse wheel, we can see that this insets the path by the same amount at all points. The shortcut for Inset is Ctrl plus the 9 key at the top of the keyboard. Let's keep doing it until the path is the size we want. Now let's duplicate this path with Ctrl D, make it more yellow and desaturated, and inset it a bunch of times. Let's duplicate one more time. Make this one a very light yellow, almost white. Then inset it. Okay, now we can select all of these and group them together with Control G. And we're going to use the Bend Path Effect to bend this a bit. So let's open the Path Effects dialog by going to Path, Path Effects. Then let's click this plus button down here. Then choose Bend here. Now next to Bend Path, let's click this first button, which says Edit on Canvas. We now get this green line here going across the center of the object, which we can use to bend the object. However, we want the line to go from this point up here to this one down here. To do this, we have to check this original path as vertical box. This makes the object horizontal, with the line going through the correct points, but it also shrinks the object. To fix this, we can grab one of these nodes at the ends of the line, hold Ctrl and drag it out to the length we want. Now we can click and drag the green line itself to bend the object. We can also adjust the handles of the nodes for better control. We can move the nodes around as well. And with this node at the end of this blue line here, we can change the width of the object. When we have it the way we want it, we can apply the path effect by going to Path, Object to Path. Okay, now let's switch to the Circles and Ellipses tool, hold Control, and create a circle here. Let's give this a dark blue fill. Now let's click this button to give it a linear gradient. Then we can move this stop up here, and this one down here. And for this stop, let's raise the alpha channel all the way up and give it a light blue fill. All right, now we can select our meteorite and move it onto the circle. Let's click this Raise One Step button up here to put it above the circle. Next, we can add a glow to the front of the meteorite. Let's first switch to the Circles and Ellipses tool, hold Ctrl and Shift, and create a circle centered about right here. Let's make it white, then click this button in the Fill and Stroke dialog to give it a radial gradient. Now we can switch to the Select tool, and click this lower one step button to put it below the meteorite, then adjust the position and size if necessary. We can also lower the opacity a bit.
OK, let's now add some stars in here. Let's switch to the Stars and Polygons tool and make sure we're on star mode. For corners, I'll go with 4. And with everything else on the defaults, I'll click and drag in here to create a star. We can hold Ctrl to snap the angle. Let's raise the opacity all the way up. Then we can zoom in, hold Ctrl, and drag in this inner handle to change the spoke ratio if we want. We can give the star a glow as well. I'll simply select the circle I used for the meteorite and duplicate it with Ctrl D, move it up to the star, then shriek it down while holding Shift and Ctrl. Let's click this button to put it below the star, and I'll lower the opacity a bit more. Now we can Shift click the star to add it to the selection, then open the Align and Distribute dialog with this button, and align the objects vertically with this button and horizontally with this one. Now we can group these together with Ctrl G, then duplicate it a few times to add some more stars in here. Finally, let's give the logo a border. Let's first select the blue circle here, then shift click the meteorite group, let's duplicate them with Ctrl D. Now let's press Shift Ctrl G to ungroup the meteorite objects. Let's turn all of this into a single path by going to Path Union. Next, let's switch to the color picker tool here and click the darkest blue to set the whole object to that color. And if we want, we can switch to the fill and stroke dialog and make it a bit darker. Now let's switch to the select tool and click this lower selection to bottom button to put the object below everything else. Then let's go to Path Outset. This is the opposite of Inset, and it will outset the path by the same amount at all points. The shortcut for this is Control plus the zero key at the top of the keyboard. Let's do it a few more times until we have a nice border. Alright, now we have a simple Meteorite logo. I hope you enjoyed the lesson, and I hope to see you again in the next one. Thanks for watching.